So, hi all. Um, in the next session, I'm going to introduce you to a QGIS Stack API plugin and how you can use it to access Stack Catalog inside QGIS. My name is Samuel Mwakisambwe. Uh, I'm from Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. Uh, I work for Katoza as a senior um, software developer. We are a technological company that uh, provides services for force um, software. So we provide training, um, software development, and uh, we provide maintenance for the existing force GIS systems. Also, I'm a QGIS core and PyQGIS developer. So um, we're going to cover, these are the topics that we are going to cover. Uh, we're going to have a brief uh, overview on stack, spatial temporal asset catalog. Um, for those who have attended session in, in this room today, they might have a, an idea of what stack is. Can I just, uh, can, can, can those who have attended area session raise their hands so I can know? Okay, so it's a few of them, then I'll just uh, have a brief overview on the stack. Also, we're gonna look at the stack uh, components, the stack uh, catalog collection, and then uh, we're gonna dive in into the stack API. After that, I'm gonna give a, a, a brief look into the QGIS and QGIS plugins, and then we're gonna dive in into uh, the QGIS stack plugin. So stack stands for spatial temporal asset catalog. Um, I, would like, I like to define it as a unified language for um, unified language that provide access to your spatial data. So let's say you have um, different satellite imagery providers, and let's say you have NASA and then SH. So what stack stack does is that um, it provides a specification where you could. Uh, you could use to access data from both providers. Instead of you know, going to each provider and fetch data and use it, Stack provides a way that you could um, just query data and blows from both um, um, providers. Um, uh, Stack, um, Stack um, focuses on being more searchable and accessible. It, um, it has more emphasis on the discovery of data compared to other specification. And um, Stack has JSON at its core. That means the whole um, component of the Stack catalog are based on JSON files. Um, and also Stack has a distinguished um, characteristics compared to other specification. So for example, Stack focuses more on cloud native and um, compared to other, other, other specification, that is you could easily access data that's been saved on the cloud. And um, so the Stack components are basically catalog, collection, and item. So catalog is more of a folder for other components and it is possible in stack to, for a catalog to host another catalog. Um, we have collection, which is a unit for storing items and the item um, is an instance that store the assets, which is the main component, I could say main, uh, yeah, main component for the, for the stack specification. We also have, uh, among the stack components, we also have stack API. Um, the basic functionality of the stack API is to link in a dynamic way the catalog, the collection, and the item um, so that user could uh, find a, a more structured way of accessing the, the catalog. So stack API achieves this by providing endpoints to each of the stack components, so we can see that we have already looked at uh, that we have catalog, we have um, collection, and then we have item, and then the Stack API has endpoint for each of those 
um, components. If you just take a look at the, at the image right now, the current slide, you can see that uh, there's a loot page where a user can get all information about the catalog, and then there is um, um, a collection. Can I over? No, I can't. Yes. Yes, you can see that there is collection here. That is an endpoint for getting all the collection available on the, on the stack. And then if you look um, down here, you can see there's items, which is an endpoint that you can use to get the information for the items that has been saved on the stack catalog. Yeah, stack data. So um, there's a variety of data that stack can host and provide. Um, you can see, for example, those, those are imagery data and uh, that's climate data. These images are from the Microsoft Planetary Computer Catalog, which has a lot, a lot of data. And um, other catalogs um, are also available, not only from Microsoft. There is also Digital Earth, and then there's also S Search. So this is just an example of um, the type of data that Stack can, can host. Um, um, so you can, we can see one benefit of Stack is that um, it provides a way, um, a structured way of accessing all this data. You don't have like, you know, to sit down and write an email to a provider, you know, I want this data. You could just use the catalog from that specific provider and then fetch that data and then do your um, either analysis or editing. So this, this is QGIS, um, a GIS desktop application that enables creating, editing, and uh, analysis of geospatial data. Um, QGIS contains functionality through core features and through plugins that add on top, uh, add on top of the core features. So um, now we're gonna go and talk about the QGIS Stack API plugin. So around um, the end of last year, Microsoft reached out to us, Katoza, and uh, they wanted to develop a plugin that will enable um, access of Stack Catalog inside QGIS. So we have seen what Stack Catalog is. Now we are looking at how we could, uh, you know, how we could use the data inside a, dex a GIS desktop application. So that's where the plugin comes in. So we started development and uh, on January this year, we published the first uh, plugin version on the QGIS uh, official plugin repository. So um, the the plugin is available for all QGIS 3 version, and uh, we can see that's the icon of the, of the plugin was installed. You can see here where the arrow points. Um, the plugin is available, as I mentioned, in the QGIS plugin, um, QGIS official plugin repository. You can just open the QGIS, man QGIS plugin manager and then download it from there. You can just search Stack API browser and then just download the, the, the plugin. So, um, plugins has a, a ton of features, I can say. <laughs> um, in, the, in the client side, we can see that's the main look of the plugin. Um, we have connections, which are essentially the stack catalogs. So let's say we have a stack catalog from planetary computer that has a ton of, uh, of data. When you open the plugin, the plugin will come with default um, installed catalogs. Um, so when you click here, uh, when you click here, you see a list of other providers that are, um, are using the stack catalog specification. So the plugin enables you, you know, uh, to edit and add and remove basic functionality for the, for the connection in QGIS application. Then you can see below there, there are filters. Um, you could uh, see here there's a temporal filter, filter by date, where you can enter the start and the end date, the range of, 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 
of the type of data, the range for the data that you want to access. Uh, and also, um, there's a, an extent, oops. Yeah, also there's extent here, uh, which you could use to filter data using the, um, the extent that you want from the map. We also have advanced filter and um, data-driven queryables, which are specific way of filtering the data inside the, the, the stack catalog. Also, the plugin supports um, fil uh, sorting, and, um, sorting and the order of sorting for the stack catalog. Um, so when the user search, this is how the, the result um, does the result tab look? Um, so the plugin have, um, as you can see, enough information for the item, and uh, it's possible for the user to um, view assets from the stack item. So imagine you are dealing with a stack catalog itself. You have to go to the um, to the browser and then type in the the catalog. Um, URL, and then it will list the catalog details, and then you could uh, go to the specific item, and then you will see a list, a JSON file with the list of items. But what the plugin does for you is that instead of you using JSON file, you could directly see a widget with the name of the item, uh, just with the name of the item, the collection that it belongs to, and then the, the date that it was acquired with a glimpse of what the data set, um, the item looks. You can just see um, the thumbnail here. And also the plugin gives you an access to the footprints. So that means you could uh, download and load the footprint of, of, of the stack catalog item inside QGIS and see it. Um, and when you, are, when, you, when you download and access the footprint, it will be added as a layer inside QGIS. So it won't just, you won't just download it and have it in a file somewhere. No, you see it inside the QGIS um, uh, map canvas. Yep, so that's searching. Um, so I'm going to talk about filtering inside the plugin. So it is possible to filter using extent, as I just touched in the two last slide. Um, you could either filter the extent by inputting the values, or you could use a present layer inside the QGIS. Um, you could use a layer, layout map, a bookmark, something that you have once used. But you could also take the current uh, map canvas, the current map canvas of the QGIS, and you could also draw on the, on the canvas. So this is basically how QGIS works for filtering extents. And uh, we are showing you that um, it's also possible to do that inside the plugin. It's not that the plugin comes with its own way of filtering using um, filtering extent. If you are familiar with using QGIS, then you could just easily you know, replicate what you usually do when you are trying to filter um, items or layers using extent. Also, the temporal filtering, um, when you want to, let's say you want to filter, because as I've just touched, some of the catalogs have a lot of, a lot of data, so sometimes you want to trim down the number of items that you want to view. And um, the plugin comes with the temporal um, filtering, where you can just input dates of the specific range where you want to download. And um, the current behavior is that the both data are inclusive. And um, yeah. Data queryables. So, um, so the, there's one feature of the star catalogs is that it's possible to, um, it, it, it provides a way of finding uh, some dynamic filters. So there are some filters that are available only for set of collections and only for, for catalog. 
So let's say there's a certain collection for Landsat data. It, it might be possible that inside that collection, there are items that um, maybe there's a possibility of filtering them using, um, okay, five minutes, okay. Is there's a possibility of maybe um, filtering them using another type of, of, of field. So what the, the plugin does is that it exposes that, uh, that functionality that's from the, the stack catalog. Now it's possible using the plugin to fetch those fields and then uh, use them in filtering. Another thing is the, the filter that we have is the possibility of you know, filtering using the available language, filter languages. Uh, which uh, the plugin supports SQL, supports SQL2, supports SQL text, and stack query. So I'm, I'm gonna go fast a little bit. I'm out of time. And um, so this is the, how, the, uh, how the plugin um, asset dialog looks. So when you click on the item view asset, it will provide you with a list of um, available assets. And then from there, you have option either to select and add it to the layer or to download it. The plugin also provide, um, so in the past we have only talked about the search and the result tab, but the plugin also provides the setting um, tab, which um, has configurations for download. So this is just an example of um, an NDVI analysis done from, uh, with images that was loaded by the star catalog using the plugin. Yeah, so that's it. Um, the plugin is released on QGIS, uh, QGIS official plugin repository, and it's available on GitHub. Um, if, if you use it and you have some issue, then those are the link you should visit. One of the things that I would also like to touch on the importance of this plugin is that it has filled in the gap of users to go to each provider or different provider, and instead, you just use this plugin and then download data from the stack catalog, different stack catalogs, and immediately do analysis inside QGIS. So these are the resources that you have. There's a plugin site and there's official. Um, there's another blog by the, about the plugin. You can go and visit. Um, there's a stack specification link and there's a QGIS uh, for those who are not familiar with QGIS and it's new time for them. Questions? Yeah.